Many things have been lost, but not all of them are inconsequential as a stray sock. Some of them have serious value or importance, and people are very eager to find them again. These are the most wanted lost objects in the world. Number 20. The Missing Fabergé Eggs the mystery of the lost Fabergé egg seems to pop up in movie plots all over the show, so even if you have no idea what these things are, then likely as not you've heard of them. These are basically fancy, smancy, jewel and precious stone encrusted eggs. They were designed and created by the jeweler Peter Carl Fabergé. He made 50 of these super expensive eggs, which by design were to be bought and sold amongst the wealthiest of people during the late 19th century. They were a firm favorite amongst the czars of Russia, and the story of the Fabergé eggs is so entangled with the fates of the Russian royal family that they are inseparable. And to be presented with one was the most sort of spine-tinglingly exciting moment. When the Russian Revolution occurred in the early part of the 20th century, the then Tsar and his family were exiled, in the First Revolution anyway, and this was a period of great upheaval, and well, if you've ever moved house, you know how easy it is to mislay your priceless Fabergé eggs, right? Anyways, the beginning of the lost eggs was likely during this era of exile. Things then got a whole lot worse for the Russian royals when, in 1917, the revolution fully removed them from the face of the earth, and they were all assassinated. It was at this point that eight of the original jewel-encrusted eggs disappeared and have never again resurfaced. The other eggs gradually surface from time to time and are sold amongst the uber-wealthy. You know how they love those shiny things after all. But those lost eight have remained unaccounted for. The fact that they're so rare in the first place makes them expensive, but these legendary eight lost eggs are basically considered utterly priceless, and they could be anywhere in the world. Perhaps it's time to take a look in the attic. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. The image on the left is there to represent the sheer abundance of precious artwork that was lost during World War II. Thousands of legendary paintings that would be worth a fortune these days were lost during the work. While most are thought to have perished or been destroyed, maybe some of them are actually still out there. And if they are, they'd be worth a lot of money. The image on the right, literally, not politically, is there to symbolize the Philosopher's Stone. That's not just a thing from Harry Potter, but something from actual legend that many people believe is real and out there somewhere. The question is, where? As always, comment down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed you on the screen. Number 19. The Holy Grail Now, for one of the most famous and most disputed lost objects in the history of the world. Made ever more famous and rendered ever more confusing by the repeated use of the object in film and fiction, the Holy Grail is, at the same time, a lost object and a metaphor for all the things that we most seek as human beings, so that's a lot then. As modern-day authors chuck their ideas into the mix, the muddy waters of the search for the Holy Grail get even murkier. But historically, the Holy Grail was believed to be the cup that was used by Christ at the Last Supper, and then the vessel that Joseph of Arimathea used to receive the blood that flowed from Christ's wounds as he was hung upon the cross. The idea of the Grail being a physical object is one aspect of the story. Another part of it is that the quest for the Grail is actually about the seeker's search for a mystical union with God. This is the direction that the Knights of Arthurian legend follow, the quest for the Grail becoming a Christian endeavor, the vessel itself being considered both an object with magical restorative and life-giving powers, and a metaphor for the Knight's pursuit of the Holy Path. 
Contemporary ideas of the grail draw heavily upon the 12th century writings of knights and quests, but they add in a few modern twists and additional dramatic license. But whatever it may or may not be, the grail remains something which, despite a lack of clear definition, remains an ever-present notion in our modern world and daily language. Number 18. The Hanjo Masamuni Sword the ultimate samurai sword, the Hanjo Masamuni sword, is part of the history and legend of Japanese culture that runs very deep indeed. The sword is associated with the master swordmaker Goro Masamune, and they're so revered that they're imbued with mystical properties. This ancient sword was crafted all the way back in the 13th century and was such a remarkable piece of immaculately realized craftsmanship that the sword was regarded as a national treasure in Japan. It would be passed down from generation to generation and with reverence passing down the power of history from the past. It was a serious sword indeed, so when this unique and completely irreplaceable object disappeared in the aftermath of World War II, the mystery and legend of the sword simply increased. There are stories that the Hanjo Masamuni may have found its way into the hands of a U.S. Army sergeant who was alleged to have taken the priceless item to be destroyed, but actually took the sword back to the United States. There are many experts who believe that the sword is still out there and is now worth millions of dollars. Could it simply be lurking forgotten in an old army footlocker somewhere? Maybe it's time to check what's hiding in that rusty old trunk in Granny's garage. Number 17. Stolen Treasures from Iraq's National Museum some fairly unsavory stuff goes on during the flux that follows any kind of war and regime change, but during the Iraq War of 2003, there was some next-level looting of completely irreplaceable ancient artifacts, and the whereabouts of many of these objects still remains a mystery. The National Museum of Iraq had a collection of relics that dated back over 5,000 years of history. These items were not only of huge national importance to the country of Iraq, but they had an enormous significance for the history of all of humankind. So you know, they're fairly special stuff. That this collection was defaced, looted, and desecrated is a shame on all people, really. Since the war, there have been huge campaigns to try and retrieve the stolen and lost art and antiques. It's believed that over 137,000 different pieces were pillaged during this period of temporary insanity, and the process of retrieving and returning them is still ongoing. The museum, which is located in Baghdad, has since reopened, but remains short of many of its prized historic treasures. Most of the lost items have turned up in foreign museums. Isn't this how much of any museum's collection is originally curated? Correct me if I'm wrong, but pilfering national treasures in the past was essentially just a perk of being an imperial power, so there may be some other lost items to be returned from many collections of dubious origin. Other pieces have been located in auction houses around the world, and a massive Interpol investigation has been tracking down each item one by one as they make their way through shady networks across the globe. Thus far, only about four and a half thousand items have been returned, so the search continues. Number 16. Head of a Fawn the head of a fawn is believed to be the earliest sculptural work in marble by Italian Renaissance master Michelangelo. Sculpted by the young Michelangelo when he was around 15 or 16 years old, he copied an antique work and made a few of his own alterations to the design. Now, generally, the teenage angst art of most people is not massively sought after. All that cheesy goth collage you made when you were a teenager is not likely to be stirring up any big international search parties. I'm so sorry to let you know. But the work of Michelangelo, even in his early teens, 
Nineteen outpourings? Well, apparently they're so very valuable that people are still searching for the lost work. The thing is, though, that despite there being reference to the head of a fawn as a sculpture created by the young artist, its whereabouts after the 17th century became less certain. There is an idea that the sculpture was in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence in 1860, but even the authenticity of that piece hasn't been exactly confirmed. The story then goes that it was transferred to the National Museum in Bargello in 1865, where it was believed to stay until the artwork was allegedly stolen during World War II. And this may indeed have been its fate, except that since it was not actually verified prior to that event, maybe it wasn't even the genuine article to begin with. Either way, there may be an original, or perhaps THE original Michelangelo, floating around out there somewhere in the world. Perhaps you'll find it. Number 15. The Amber Room Back in the early 18th century, a German sculptor and Danish amber craftsman designed and built a chamber that was entirely decorated with amber panels that were backed with gold leaf and mirrors. The result was such a spectacle that it was widely touted as one of the wonders of the world, if you like that sort of thing, and it was indeed very shiny, so lots of people did indeed like it. This glowing amber room was originally created to be placed in a Prussian palace Alice, but it later found its way to Russia and the Catherine Palace when it was given as a gift to the Tsar from the Prussian king. It contained over six tons of amber and spanned 590 square feet, so that's a rather lavish gift. The long story short, the Second World War rolled around a couple of centuries later, and the whole jolly lot was then looted by the Nazis and put on display back in Germany. But then, after the eventual collapse of Nazi Germany and their defeat in 1945, the whole thing again vanished. This time nobody knows where it went, or indeed who took it. There has since been a reconstruction of the room created at the Catherine Palace, which was officially opened in 2003. But the original, if it has survived, has never reappeared. Number 14. Fountain the notorious artwork by Marcel Duchamp, Fountain, was a standard porcelain urinal which he signed, named, and presented on its back for exhibition. The iconic piece, one of what he would refer to as ready-mades, was then submitted to exhibition in 1915 and turned the art world on its head. It had exactly the impact that was intended and began a conversation that continues even to this day. What can be considered art? and what is the role of the artiste. Duchamp's fountain was ridiculed, protested, and finally excluded from the exhibition as it was considered to be indecent. But the icon endures. The piece that is on show in London's Tate Modern is a replica that's made from earthenware, signed and dated. But at what point does a piece like this have an original? Duchamp used many versions of his fountain, and it was already an item that was widely available during the era in which he created it. So where does the genuine article begin and end in this one? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Number 13. Florentine Diamond Famous lost diamonds seem to inspire more than their fair share of general excitement and an oddly enthusiastic excess of fictional depictions of the possible pathways they may have taken. For why? Who the heck can really say? Must be rich people stuff, you know. Honestly though, when even the origins of this fancy and famous stone are disputed, not to mention the kerfuffle over its current location, you have to ask what all the fuss is about. Sometimes, you know, the story behind something is really a fabrication in order to increase its perceived value. Much of the elite art world works in a similar way. The scarcity or notoriety of something can add interest, draw attention, and increase the monetary value of an object. You know, like that Banksy painting that got semi-trashed, then magically increased in value? Anyway, the Florentine Diamond is a yellow gemstone of dubious history, which is believed to have traveled through the hands of a bunch of wealthy and apparently important 15th century Florentines, including, at one point, 
a pope. It went from the Medicis, the most powerful family in Florence, to the Habsburgs, the most powerful family in Austria. Then it was eventually allegedly stolen at some point after 1918 and taken to South America where its journey continued until it was recut and sold in the United States during the 1920s. So, in all honesty, even if it were rediscovered at this point, it would likely not even resemble the original and infamous old rock that was fondled by so many of history's richest and naughtiest individuals. But people are so very fond of a mystery, aren't they? Number 12. Ark of the Covenant the Ark of the Covenant is the most sacred of relics to the Israelites. This wooden chest was covered in gold and had an elaborately decorative lid called the Mercy Seat. The significance of the Ark is that it is believed to have contained two stone tablets upon which were inscribed the Ten Commandments so it's more than just a fancy box. This 3,000-year-old object has remained one of the enduringly appealing but perpetually elusive biblical artifacts that people have sought to find for centuries. Its appearance in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark again cemented this relic's place in people's minds as a treasure to be sought. But since the Ark of the Covenant hasn't been seen since about 586 BC, it seems to be a teeny weeny bit unlikely that anyone's just going to stumble across it anytime soon. When the Babylonian Empire conquered the Israelites, it was believed that the Ark was in the temple in Jerusalem. Beyond that, it simply disappeared from the history books. It may have been moved, or hidden, or even destroyed. There were various suggestions that it had indeed been moved and placed in Ethiopia, but although there's a bunch of research suggesting that this could be the case, and there may be, in fact, an Ark-like object in the St. Mary of Zion Cathedral in Aksum, church authorities forbid anyone from looking at the object, stating that only the guardian of the Ark may see it. So, that is mighty helpful, and the mystery just continues. Number 11. The Maxburg Archaeopteryx when the Maxburg Archaeopteryx fossil was discovered, it was only the third that had ever been unearthed. The significant and well-preserved specimen was lauded as such an important find, as it seemed to hold many of the answers to how birds may have developed from dinosaurs. However, as this is the story of how it became lost, there's another mystery here. Apparently, the fossil was discovered in a limestone quarry in Germany way back in 1956. It was then examined and poked and prodded by paleontologists all over the world. After it was returned to its original location, however, things got a little bit weird. The grumpy old quarry manager seems to have taken it upon himself to be the self-appointed keeper of the Maxburg, and he decided that nobody else was going to be messing around with it. Not while he was in charge. Now that cantankerous old so-and-so hung on to that fossil for grim death, hoarding it up until the day he eventually died in 1991. So when scientists went to retrieve the fossil for further examination and an opportunity to use some new technology to analyze it, they were baffled to discover that it was nowhere to be found. The fossil? had just completely disappeared. There are many theories about the fate of the fossil. Did the grumpy old owner lose it? Or sell it, perhaps? Was it stolen? Or, and this is my favorite one, did that old bastard have the thing buried with him when he shuffled off to his mortal coil? Number 10. The Irish Crown Jewels the Irish crown jewels were not property of the monarchy, but rather they were linked to the Order of St. Patrick, an elite gang of aristocratic toffs that was founded in 1783, and the crown jewels were the ceremonial gubbins that were worn by the Grand Master of the Order. The Irish crown jewels consisted of a star that was made out of an elaborate combination of diamonds, emeralds, and rubies on a blue enamel background, and then there was a diamond badge, and finally five gold collars that were encrusted with diamonds. Nothing too ostentatious then, you might even say understated. 
So when the jewels went missing back in 1907, there was quite the kerfuffle. The jewels were due to be sported by the fancy knights of the Order of St. Patrick when King Edward VII was on an official visit. However, they were seemingly stolen before the ceremony could take place. The jewels were kept in a strong room in the Bedford Tower in Dublin Castle, and there were a total of seven keys to the building, then a further two keys for the safe, and these were kept by the vicar no less. Just how the heist, if it was indeed a genuine heist, would be accomplished is quite the mystery. There are accounts of hopeless security in the area around the jewel's location, and the cleaning lady even encountered a thief wandering about in the strong room. Since the loss of the jewels, there have been multiple attempts to recover the lost items, including some unusual techniques involving psychics and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle author of Sherlock Holmes, offering his expertise. To this day, the 394 jewels have never been recovered. They would be worth millions of euros if they ever showed up again. Number 9. Nativity with St. Francis and St. Lawrence Everywhere you turn in Italy, there are beautiful artworks and extraordinary ancient artifacts. The priceless and beautiful artifacts of this country are scattered liberally all over the regions, and many valuable and irreplaceable artworks are hung in churches for anyone to see. Or, it would appear, to steal. Yes, Italy has lost track of some fairly important pieces of art history. In fact, over the years, there have been some extraordinarily brazen thieving of famous art from sacred sites, often in broad daylight. In 1989, 13,000 works of art in Italy's innumerable churches and museums were simply lifted and carried off by thieves. That's a staggering figure. But when you consider that 80% of all of Europe's art theft occurs in Italy, it's a wonder that there are any flipping paintings left at all. And that brings us to Caravaggio. One of the greatest painters the world has ever known, Caravaggio lived a short but wildly creative life and died a premature and violent death. He painted some of the most extraordinary and sometimes controversial works of his time, but his masterpiece may well have been his Nativity with St. Francis and St. Lawrence. Completed in 1600, its painting depicts the Nativity of Jesus, surrounded by many figures including Mary, St. Francis of Assisi, and St. Lawrence. It was approximately 9 feet high and 6.5 and feet wide, so it wasn't just stuffed under someone's sweater as they made a dash for the exit. In fact, the painting was stolen from the Oratory of St. Lawrence in Palermo, Sicily, and it was cut from its frame one night in 1969, never to be seen again. There was a rumor that it surfaced again briefly as it changed hands amongst the Sicilian Mafia a few times in the following decades, but investigations have never turned up the original. In 2015, a replica was commissioned and hangs in the altar of the oratory. Number 8. The Jules Rimet World Cup Trophy the story of the theft of the World Cup trophy has all the elements of a French farce, and surely, given the short-lived nature of the disappearance, it wouldn't be remiss to consider that this was perhaps a bit of a publicity stunt or even a daft prank, now would it? Back in 1966, the FIFA World Cup was being hosted by England. Prior to the event itself, there were all sorts of exciting publicity events in the build-up to the tournament. You know, all the usual schmoozing and handshaking of royals and such. Anyways, the famous Jules Rimet World Cup trophy was received by the Football Association during this period as part of all this promotional circus. In March, it was placed on display with the strict instructions instructions that it was to be kept under guard at all times. But somehow, during the guard's circuit of the exhibition space one Sunday, 
some scallywag managed to circumnavigate the security and force open the display case, making off with the trophy before anyone was the wiser. Of course, Scotland Yard were brought in to investigate, and the whole long arm of the law began to flex. The day after the robbery, a ransom demand would be received, and the police stepped in to arrange a sting. Then ensued a lot of silliness and subterfuge worthy of a Mr. Bean movie, which resulted in the eventual apprehension and arrest of a local petty thief. The trophy, however, remained unfound for several more days until it was then unearthed by a dog named Pickles. Seriously, this is the actual story of the theft. Number 7. Swedish Crown Jewels in a literal daylight robbery, a couple of brazen burglars conducted a high-speed heist complete with Hollywood-style getaway when they stole the Swedish crown jewels. The jewels were being kept on display in Strangenas Cathedral in a locked display cabinet, and frankly though, is a locked display cabinet really the appropriate place to keep two gold crowns and a bejeweled orb that was worth $6.9 million? I'm just asking. Asking. It wasn't exactly the heist of the century, though. The feeble security measures were easily circumnavigated by the two thieves who apparently busted open the case, grabbed the golden objects, and then hot-footed it right out the door. They then rode bicycles to a waiting speedboat where they made their getaway. They were pursued by police in a helicopter as they made their escape through the vast network of waterways nearby. A man was eventually apprehended and convicted because his DNA was found on the jewels. Apparently, this jewel heist was not even the first to have been conducted in a similar fashion in this same part of Sweden in recent years. Another very similar robbery took place in 2013, and you would think that they would have at least upgraded their cabinets by now, though, surely? Number 6. Sarcophagus of Menkore How exactly do you lose a sarcophagus, you may well ask? Well, for your future reference, apparently the best way to lose a humongous lump of stone is to put it on a ship and then send it out to sea. The most mad part of the story is not so much how the sarcophagus of Menkore came to be lost, but rather how it came to be found. The things that so-called explorers have done in the name of discovery really do leave a lot to be desired. Back in the 1830s, a rather notorious English military officer spent his days going around blowing up ancient monuments, all in order to discover what artifacts might be concealed within. That's how he he came to be in possession of Howard Wies, a fan of gunpowder and heritage wrecker extraordinaire. The third pyramid of Giza was the tomb of Egyptian pharaoh Menkore. This was his final resting place until the arrival of Wies and his explosives. The destruction was wrought through the pyramid, and the spoils were extracted, loaded onto a schooner named Beatrice, and then sent back towards Europe. But Beatrice never arrived, and the whereabouts of her wreck, and therefore the ancient contents, are still unknown to this very day. Number 5. Lost Library of the Moscow Tsars there is a story, or perhaps it would be more appropriately called a legend, that the library of the Moscow Tsars contained a massive collection of ancient Greek texts. Irreplaceable, historically important texts that dated back to ancient times, the collection was believed to have been one of the greatest libraries in all of the world, and by the 16th century it housed some of the most important writings in many languages from all of history. So, what exactly happened to it? Well, it looks as though the loss of the world's greatest library may well have been the work of Ivan the Terrible. The Tsar of Russia from 1547 to 1584 is known for his fearsome reputation and kind of insane outbursts. His ruling of Russia was essentially where the absolute power of the future Tsars would come from. He's responsible for the first cult of the personality in Russian politics, and likely has not changed the face of Russia to such an extent that his legacy is still visible in their leadership today. So he was a fairly powerful force then. 
Which is why, when the legend of the so-called Golden Library concludes with its disappearance during his time as Tsar, we're able to believe that a man with this amount of power and belief in his own importance might actually hide an entire library from the rest of the world. That's how the story goes, anyways. Do you have any other suggestions? Just how do you hide a library and keep it hidden for centuries? Number 4. Lost Poems of Greek Poet Sappho Very few texts from ancient times have ever really made it into the modern world. All the way back in the 7th century BC, the poet Sappho was highly revered as one of the greatest of ancient Greek lyric poets, but we have very few examples of her work. However, in recent years there have been some discoveries which have boosted the archives of Sappho and got poetry people's knickers all up in a twist. A papyrologist with the improbable name Dirk Abink from Oxford University has revealed two texts. These texts are fragments of never-before-seen material by the legendary Sappho. So it appears that even when things are believed to be lost for literally thousands of years, there is still a chance that they may turn up. So there is hope for your lost socks just yet. Number 3. The Lost Leonardo some treasures have captivated imaginations for generations. One such thing is the lost painting of Leonardo da Vinci, known as the Battle of Anghieri, which is believed that he had painted in 1505. Many of his preparatory works still exist, and there are plenty of experts that believe the painting itself may be concealed beneath a later fresco in the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. So just how did the art history world get so fixated on a painting that nobody in living memory has ever seen any evidence of? Well, like any good mystery, there are some compelling clues to its existence. Artists from around the same era as da Vinci made drawings of a painting with this title. The sketches and prep work that was done by the artist himself, plus a hefty dose of rumor and speculation, have driven the hunt for the lost work to continue to the present day. But whenever any search seems to get close, something foils the progress. Perhaps some things are just meant to stay a mystery. Number 2. Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum Theft Back in 1990, two thieves disguised as police officers broke into the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, Massachusetts and stole no less than 13 works of art with an estimated value of $500 million. To this day, the case remains unsolved and there have never been any arrests. There's still an active $10 million reward for any information leading to the recovery of the stolen artworks. Amongst the pilfered paintings were works by Vermeer, Rembrandt, Degas, and Monet. Although there has been an ongoing FBI investigation, very little is actually known about what happened. There is next to no physical evidence, but the information that has been gleaned through interrogations has led the investigation to focus primarily on the Boston Mafia as a possible perpetrator. Number 1. Peking Man Again with the lost ancient artifacts, this time it seems that it may be carelessness that has caused the misplacement of a priceless fossil of a hominid known as Peking Man. The fossil of this Homo erectus was originally unearthed in a cave close to Beijing in 1923. It formed part of the tracing of humankind across the landmass that is now known as China, and the thing is that it was mislaid in 1941 and nobody has been able to remember where they put it since. There's some speculation that it was removed from China and placed on a ship to be transported, but was apparently lost at sea. But then there's an equally likely account that states that the lost fossil is now located under a parking lot somewhere in China. Neither of these potential locations is ideal for anyone ever planning on studying the fossil, but there you go. You can't win them all. Sometimes it's truly amazing just how careless that people can be. Mislaying your keys or a jacket is to be expected from time to time, but losing this much art or even an entire library? Well, that takes some next-level negligence. 
Have you ever lost anything so valuable? Or perhaps you have some clues as to the whereabouts of these lost treasures? Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Also be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.